in people. It's a war in men, war in women. To take back every strip of estate that has been considered to the enemy. Equip us, strengthen us, and cause your face to shine on us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right, let's do 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse number 1. 1 Samuel 10, verse number 1. I will teach for 35 minutes, there are about 40 minutes maximum, uh, waiting for the wave. When the wave comes, uh, we will move into warfare. And the objective of warfare is to take back territory that has been conceded to the enemy. And that will be the objective. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin, Zelza. And they shall say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found, and lo, thy father has left the care of the asses, and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then thou shalt go forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there sh shall meet thee three men going up to Bethel, carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine, and they will salute thee, and give thee thee two loaves of bread which thou shalt receive of their hands and after that thou shalt go to the hill of God wherein is the garrison of the Philistines let me stop the reading there you will go to the hill of God which currently is the garrison, the location of the garrison of the Philistines. It's the hill of God. But Satan has annexed it. It has been considered to the enemy. There has been a political negotiation that has ceded out that territory to Satan. It is the hill of God. God has his name upon it. God has his title to it, but right now it is the station where the garrison of the Philistines are pitched. Now, today I would like us to get a few details on how to reclaim territory that has been lost to the devil. And when we talk about territory, we look at it from a very broad context, a very broad application. Because territory might be your family. And you might notice that there is a pattern among your siblings. A pattern that was not imprinted by the hand of God, by the power of God. But a pattern that is suggestive of an influence uh, that has entered into the space and now has the handle, the steering wheel of the family and the trends that find expression are not consistent with that which the word of God has promised us. It means a domain. And, and it, it may be that these your siblings are born again, but the pattern is still sustained. It is the heel of the Lord, but it has become the, the place where the garrison of the Philistines are currently gathered. If you want to take back territory, how I wish most of you were present in our first session. Because the issues we raised in our first section is the preliminary requirement of a warrior. And I'm not going back there. 
They will listen to it subsequently. Okay. So having, as having fulfilled the requirement of the first session, let us go to the engagement protocol. Ezekiel chapter 29. That's the first thing you will need to do to take back a territory that has been ceded out to the enemy. Ezekiel chapter 29. There is something that we call binocular prayer. That is what you are going to engage. And, and stay with me. Stay with me. Let me tell you how Satan is. Satan is a very consistent being. He's a faithful being. Imagine that woman that had the coverture of the spine. She was bent over for 18 years. And when Jesus ran a diagnosis of her condition through spiritual x-ray, he found out that it was a spirit of infirmity that was responsible. So the, the spirit of infirmity responsible for the coverture of her spine was in active service for 18 years without a break. The spirit never said, ah, oh, man, it's winter. Let me just, <laughs> let me just leave her and, and chill out. Satan can be seriously consistent. So if you are not ready to be consistent, don't even take hold of the plow. Because if you start what I want to teach and you stop because the results you were expecting, you did not see them on time and you stop, you have stirred up the honestness. So, <laughs> I am telling you as a man that started and stopped and I got the feedback. Then the feedback itself was sufficient counseling that you don't do this and stop. Allow him to take over your finances. Don't fight. Him. But if you want to fight, know that you will never stop fighting. Allow him to take your daughter. But if you want your daughter back, just know that you must sustain the posture of binocular prayer. You know, I, 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 I was supposed to start with the elementary aspects that you need courage. Because whenever you are going for a spiritual mission, that was the counsel that God gave to Joshua when Moses died. Be courageous. I decided to skip all of that because that's counseling. What I want you to, I want to major on engagement. That's why I left courage. Left. The first line of engagement is binocular prayer. And that is in the book of Ezekiel chapter 1, 29 from Verse number one. Please help me tell your neighbor, inconsistency lies the power. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, in the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all of Egypt. How did I get the terminology? Binocular prayer. I got it from verse 2. And I will show you the details on this kind of prayer. It says, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, um, our vision as men is binocular. And that means that you can only see 180 degrees from the side to the front because your eyes are this way. So you, the extent to which you can see is the, is the degree to which you are blind because of the position of your eyes. Uh, and this creates focus. Meanwhile, a chicken's eyes are by the side. So the chicken can see 360 degrees, but the chicken lacks lacks the ability for focus. You can see around, so, it will, uh, so. 
<laughs> so, the prophet is undergoing education. And God told him, set your face, binocular. It means you will need to ignore other things and consider the matter at hand priority and emergency. So it will captivate your entire attention. Mm. Hey. And notice he said, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now this is the ruler that has entered into the space that had annexed the territory. This is the one that is responsible for making the heel of the Lord the garrison of the Philistines. That's the entity. So there are preliminary investigations that you need to take place, that needs to take place in order for you to know what exactly is responsible for the encroachment. Are you there? You must be able to put a name to it. Sometimes you know because you have a dream, you have a revelation, you have an insight, and you are able to isolate the culprit. You can't do binocular prayer if you cannot identify the culprit. Once and again, what the devil does is that he likes to hide his true identity behind situations, behind people, behind circumstances. He does that. And you will need to be able to discern what entity is at work. All right? You notice that there is a pattern and your marital life is experiencing a huge delay. And even when relationships begin, it ends for very trivial reasons. It happened once, happened twice, happened three times. That is a pattern. It means that there is a great likelihood that there is a spiritual entity that is responsible for the trends, responsible for the patterns. Then when you begin to pray about it, then God now gives you insight. You cannot begin binocular prayers until you have an insight that, that isolates the culprit. In the case of the woman that had the coverture of the spine, it was a spirit of infirmity. For many of us, it is the spirit that was worshipped, maybe by your father or grandfather, that is still looking for current worshippers. So, and he knows that he has chances around your life because there is a link. There is something, there is an opening that was secured because of the worship that was done by previous generations. So you've left home, you are now, you are now in England, you are hidden away, but the spirit um, doesn't visit the next door, comes straight to your household because it's hoping to uh, find memory, find worship, find access, find entrance. And then he now finds you in laxity and uh, your, your walls are falling. <laughs> so he comes out and begins to master you and to allow you to accept his influence over your life. And because of your laxity, he is able to secure a place. And then after a long time, you now discover that the patterns around your life are not, there is a logic behind it. There is a science behind it. And that means there is an intelligent entity that is masquerading behind those circumstances in order to bring you into bondage. The moment you come into the realization, and meanwhile, when this kind of spirits operate, they give you pictures in your dreams. They announce their presence in your dreams. You cannot be romancing with a spirit and not see the spirit in your dreams. It's impossible. You can't be walking with the Holy Ghost and not receive dreams and intelligences, revelations from the Holy Ghost. You can't, you can't. Even if you are a dreamer or not, he will show up on your dream and say, Hey! Wake up! He will do something to make you know that he's around. Hallelujah. So when, when spirits are romancing with you, you are likely to see them. They are imageries. Because spirits, are, are you there? When they pass around your corridor, they activate your soul. And they manifest through images. They manifest through thoughts. They manifest through pictures. That's the language of the spirits generally. So you are, going to, you are likely to see this activity find expression. And if you are here today, 
Are you with me? And there are several types of dreams that sustain a certain definite theme that keeps replaying, 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 replaying. It's the proof of the fact that there is an entity that is in your space and that entity is holding sway around your life. So in order for you to begin to engage binocular prayers, you must be able to isolate the culprit. And when you do, because you know, it says, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh. Now, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him. You are going to go direct. Satan does not like direct combat because he's not as strong as he likes to make you think he is. He needs to tell a lie. He needs to walk through a deception. He needs to bring an exaggeration to you in order for him to hold sway in your life. The moment the spirit of truth goes to work and isolates the culprit and puts him before your face, then God empowers you to engage in binocular prayer. When you begin to engage in binocular prayer, there are symptoms that are going to spill out all over the place. But you must understand that those things are normal. Okay, let me read to you. He said, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and all Egypt. Speak and say. So this kind of prayer, you don't do it in tongues. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You can pray in tongues to vitalize your spirit. You can pray in tongues to activate your spirit. You can pray, pray in tongues to energize your spirit. But when you begin to do the binocular engagement, God is teaching the prophet. He says, speak and say. Now stop. He's not asking you to speak your own words. But he's asking you to speak his words. So even before you begin the binocular prayer, you must have received the word of the Lord for the matter. So what binocular prayers is about is enforcing, is an enforcement protocol. This is what God said. God said this. And because God said this, you must do this. And you don't stop. You, you do it in the morning. You do it in the afternoon. You do it in the night until you weary Satan. The name, the meaning of endurance is outlasting the devil. You are not going to take any territory from Satan if you are not mad. Yeah. You are mad with your consistency. You are mad with your engagement. You are mad with your attack. When the devil sees that this man is crazy and he will not stop, he will, he will give way. So he said, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, you see, when we continue in the things that God put in his mouth to say, you will now see the true reality of Pharaoh. According to this insight that he got from God that is declaring now, the reality of Pharaoh was a great dragon that lied in the midst of the rivers. What does this great dragon say? He say, which say the river is my own. I made it for myself. Now, this dragon likes a sense of entitlement, sense of ownership, sense of control. By the time we go into the practical session, most of you think you are free. We will introduce some utensils into this place. And you will find out you've been living on the backside of your destiny. You have not even entered into your true destiny territory. Because the dragon has said, you are mine. The dragon has said, your womb is mine. 
this dragon, this dragon. Hallelujah. This dragon will never leave until it is clear that he cannot stay. And that's why, we, don't start. Don't start. This is not a game. It's not a walk in a park. If you want to reclaim territory, it means you are saying there is nothing else I will settle for except territory. You need to be stubborn. You need to be consistent. You need to pedestal the need to reclaim the territory higher than your own appetites, your own pleasures. That's how we fight off the enemy. The dragon that lieth in the midst of the waters which says, what? The river is my own and I made it for myself. Suddenly, this dragon takes a creative designation. Meanwhile, we know that Satan was not given any license to create anything. But he said, this is my creation. So I'm at liberty to use this life, to use this destiny any way I want, unchallenged. That's what the dragon is saying. And so when you want to contend with this beast, oh my God, you cannot start and stop. I am against you. We are going to use those words in our practical in a moment. And this place will be set on fire. Ah, I see the way you are looking so fine. So there is... Your face is a well pulled out and your tie is erect. When we start contention, you will find out that you might need to lose some of your decorum, some of your alignment uh, in order for you to take hold. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. The spirit of revelation will take you beyond the first value and you can now see the dragon that lies in the midst of the water. You will see as we proceed how that God begins to put words in the mouth of the prophet to speak against the dragon. So the first word we have picked from here, the first statement we have picked from here is, I am against you. Somebody say, I am against you. Yes. You see, I know you've not said this kind of thing for a long time, for years. You, you've not been bold enough to say that, you see, find that boldness this morning. Find it this morning. I am against. It means you are saying that, um, you know, both of us will not be here. One must be knocked out. Is it that you knock me out? And when you knock me out, do it very well. Because if there's any strand of me still left, I will still be what? Against. Still be against. I'll be against you on Monday. I'll be against you on Tuesday. I'll be against you on Wednesday. In fact, my job is to be against you. So that's one word I'd like you to pick from that scripture. I am what? Yes. Then we now got employed into the oil industry and we felt that was the greatest blessing that ever happened to us in all the world. And then we were posted. We were posted to the place and I noticed that every month somebody died. Now, I know you will not believe it, so let me tell you how, why it is true. Hmm? All right, so if you are working in a depot, for instance, the, um, the policy that ex established those depots in Nigeria is that the coverage area of the depot is 450 kilometers radius from every side. So that's the coverage area of the depot. And um, I took inventory of all. I was, I was the chief in Benue State. You know, when God was sending me to Benue State, he told me that I'm sending you to Benue State. So I now told him that if it is true, when they do the posting, I'm not going to lobby. Post me to Benue State. So he now posted me to Benue State. Meanwhile, 
I don't want to go into the detail, but he posted me to be So when I got there, I began to do the initial prayer, 12 months of prayer and fasting to take root in the state, okay? So um, the radius of coverage is 450 kilometers. And uh, the last time I checked the inventory, I checked the, um, the marketers that are drawing products from that facility, it was uh, 2,455, okay? So that's our client base, that's our client base, 2,455 marketers. Every month you must see an obituary poster. Every month, every month, every month, every month, every month. And you know what? They die on Thursday. Wow. Wow. So it came to pass. So we began to see the pattern. You see, you know when you notice that there is an intelligent pattern, you will know that there is an intelligence behind it. It's not just random. There is, there is a, an entity that is responsible that wants to be glorified in a certain way. So I notice every month one person dies, and sometimes it's two people die. Then there are many agencies that work at the depot to carry out uh, government administration. Then I now notice that we, that were the government guys, that thing started happening to us. The guy, because only big marketers have offices at the depot. So you have Total has an office there. Uh, mobile has an office there. So the guy that, the total guy, the total head, that shouts every day, every day he shouts, he would just shout. One day the whole place was just quiet. Huh? And I asked, we've not heard this man shout. I said, oh, you're not aware he's dead. Wow. He died. Oh. Then the thing begins to go around from office to office, office to office. The people will get paralyzed first before they die. They will get paralyzed first, then they will die. They will get paralyzed first, then they will die. It didn't, it didn't mean anything to me because I, I don't know them until my friend Cosmos, who was a total staff. That was the, he was my friend. We used to pray together sometimes. I was, you know, he was Catholic uh, by spiritual background and I was trying to educate him and all of that. And then he wanted to get married. He went his people in the village said, no, you can't get married to this lady. That she's coming from this family. And they, in, our ancestors had a challenge with that family. So you can. Cosmos told them that I've disowned you people. You are no longer my family. That is, it's not the family that disowned you. It was Cosmos that. <laughs> <laughs> my wife knows Cos Cosmos. Great guy, good guy. So the elders now came and said, okay, hey, please don't discount us, don't discount us. But that statement he made had put him on the edge. And Cosmos died on Thursday. Wow. So it was as if there was a partnership between those, the witches in that family with the witches that were stationed in the prem. As they said, we, we normally do it on Thursday. <laughs> when Cosmos died, I knew that none of us was safe. Wow. So what I did was that we started a fast. And we don't eat as long as the sun is still shining. Yeah, that was the instruction. So we come to, normally we resume office by, because we are, we are big guys, so we can come to the office by 9.30, 10 o'clock, when the rest will resume by 8 o'clock, so we can come by 10 o'clock. When we started the fast, we started coming by 6. When, when no one is around at the place, we pray and the dragon, that, we anoint strange places and say, I am what? That was how death stopped. Yeah, in that place till we left. Oh, Nobody really? died again. Yeah. I want us to see the words that God put in the mouth of this prophet. But I will put hooks, verse 4, in thy jaws, and I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick upon thy scales and I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers and all the fish of thy waters shall stick to thy scales and I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness 
thee and all the fish of thy rivers. And thou shalt fall upon the open fields, and thou shalt not be brought together nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beast of the fields and to the inhabitants, to the beasts of the field and to the fowls of heaven. So the possibility of returning to that place of dominion will be cut off forever. When a true warrior fights, Satan can no longer recover for eternity. And that's what we want to do this morning. So my theory time has finished. It's time for, for war, for practicals. Hallelujah. But for these practicals, I need a handheld microphone because this one is for gentle people. Uh, amen. Can you give me life here? Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, this one now is for warriors, for fighters. Now, we are going to do something very... Meanwhile, I don't know if you're interested in war. Because, you know, I told you... <laughs> I don't know about your interest. I went to preach in a crusade in Wagalada, a local government in Abuja, FCT, for those of you that are from Nigeria. And uh, we're casting out devils. So many witches, so many... Uh, I'm casting out devils. My wife was at home. The devils I was casting were tormenting her. The demons knew my address. They knew my children. So when I came back from that crusade, in fact, she, she had a miscarriage that weekend. So when, when we got back, we decided that the whole clan would be clan of warriors. Now, don't do this trick of maybe your wife is the one spiritual. You are just receiving cover. Uh, the dragon, the dragon knows your name. <laughs> uh, we all, we, these days, men, we have allowed our wives to become prayer pillars. Then we just say, amen, amen. amen. Mm, mm. That level of civilization can no longer suffice. So I want to take a moment right now. We have 40 minutes to penetrate. Now this is the drill. First of all, we'll begin to speak in tongues. So that God can activate our giftings. And then through the eye of revelation, we'll begin to engage. So forget about who you came with. If your wife is by your side. You are on your own right now. And then we want to engage in the spirit. We want to engage. So when you do that, you can rise on your feet so that you can have an idea of a militant posture. A militant. Are you, are you with me? All right, so uh, uh, an idea of a militant posture. A militant. Set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, this is what you are going to do. You are going to run an investigation for the next uh, 30 seconds. What patterns have you seen in your life? What patterns, what patterns have you noticed? The power of God can reverse any situation. Don't accept any contrary situation to be your lot and your portion. Irrespective of whether you were a notorious unbeliever before you gave your life to Christ. That does not count anymore. When you find a pattern that is not consistent as we pray in the spirit, that you give a name to it. That is what we are going to strike. So we are going to pray in tongues. Everyone is going to be... Forget about your lipstick. The alignment of your lipstick must will be compromised in the process. Can you begin to ascend in the spirit? Oh, I can't hear the voice of the warrior here. There must be a warrior in the room. There must be a fighter among us. The dragon is not merciful. The dragon is not merciful. The dragon shows no mercy. He shows no mercy. He wants to regulate. He wants to control your destiny. Come on, 
Gloria si cobrante casa la bonta mel. Combes que topa cabosa minaite. Combe la bobo si cobras que tomina cantelia. Enso mina cante babo santeli. Ibra babo bosante. Ibra babo bosante. Abre que te la bobo si atade. Abresco, vavalosa, ico babinaite. Oh Santelia, pero no sico pampalaita, escumba sequilato, presco feliz, aqui babon samanda. Oh Jesus. E amo mo seco bamisa, raico palacura seminantole, esco bezosani, bracatelia, uke babasuntelia. Rise compalando the voice of the warrior must ascend, must arise. The dominion of the dragon must be cut off. Hey, so conde, hey, so conde. Prisco bababon sakaya, cure babosiko. Lando Borosico Press Confateli by Combere Casilla Abosa Benai Compalato Isosela Cantelia Beri Acuse da Baranto Ante Cuda Baconse Lecadia Pirasco Tami Pirasco Tasaminaida Pirasco Tabres Contami Enzo Mene Catalo Prisco Falamanda Eca Babosa Eka babe saita, antome na galeto, eskobe na tia konsama, abras keta bila kos keta lia kanteli. Hey, rai kompele, rai kompele, rai kompele, rai kompele, rai konsala konde, abezo si, abranta babonde, akaito kabela, isa mentali, abresko vila atele. Oh yes, oh yes, we were raised to reclaim territories conceded to the enemy. We are the warrior generation. The hand of God is upon us. Miso se kabai konde, abaruse saita, bande bo konda, bande bo seketa, bande bo bo konte. Bande si malanto, bande kalebasi. Aile bobo mama, igale de dale lobo zedi. Amen aman selo. Aile bo, mai kasi lo ma santo maya. Ega mosela ma, ega nanto bela, amedo, amedo, amedo. Glory to your name.